Welcome to school. We're going to talk about exhaust, death, or not death. We're talking about diesel exhaust regeneration, um, diesel exhaust after treatment. Today, I want to specifically talk about the regeneration DPF system in a Chevy Duramax. Uh, sitting today in a 2015 Chevy Duramax with a reduced power message on the dash, and it's got a code for soot accumulation because it won't it won't do a regen. So it's built up in the DPF. So I wanted to take just a moment and kind of talk about what regeneration is, why that's completely unrelated to the DEF system, and why we have it, how it works, and what some common problems are, and what's wrong with this truck. So a diesel engine emits particulate exhaust. So there's particulate matter that comes out of the tailpipe of the exhaust. The US EPA has decided that that's super toxic and we really shouldn't have that being emitted out into the atmosphere, which there's an argument to be made that particulate matter only goes up to about 400 feet and then it comes down within a couple of days and it's not polluting the environment. But that's not what the point of this video is. The point of this video is to talk about regeneration and DPFs and why and how they break. So. DPF is a diesel particulate filter, so it is designed to filter the particulate matter that is coming out of the exhaust on a diesel truck. So this is, like I said, it's a Chevy Duramax. So this is a ceramic filter or a ceramic compound. I don't even know exactly what it's made out of because it gets really hot, but particulate soot, soot particles coming out are, are pretty big on, on a filtration level, right? As far as like how big the molecule is and how big the particle is like actually coming out. It's a pretty big piece. So this filter goes into the exhaust and it catches all of that, all those particles, all of that stuff gets caught in this filter. But over time, and time is like, in this case, you can go probably a week or so worth of driving, that filter begins to be restricted and is then res restricting exhaust flow through that filter. Now, the reason that's a problem is because if you can't flow exhaust, we can't have any engine power. So that's, that's what we gotta fix. So they use a process called regeneration. So regeneration of the diesel particulate filter is a process where using multiple systems on the truck, the exhaust gas temperature is heated up to 11 to 1300 degrees and it burns those soot particles and it turns them into an ash particle. The ash particle is substantially smaller than the soot particle which restores flow through the DPF. Now you have to keep in mind that when this process is happening we're not actually taking, nothing is going out the exhaust other than gas exhaust, right? So like there's no, the particulate is still there, it's just changing form as we're burning it to ash. Over time, that ash will build up so much so that the DPF has to either be replaced or cleaned. When we say cleaned, there's a process in the industry, we call it baking a DPF. I'm not super familiar with it because I've never done it. It's a specialized thing where you have to cut the DPF open, you get it up to a certain, temp certain temperature, and then you flush, you back flush a chemical through it to flush all that ash out. Not a thing that you're ever gonna do as a DIY or even as a professional shop because you don't have the tooling to do that. I don't have the tooling to do that. The shop I work for, it, like, you, specialty stuff. But exhaust gas temperature has to be up to a certain point. There's a bunch of other systems that have to work for the truck to enter what's called a passive regen. So a passive regen is when you're driving and it says clean the exhaust filter on the dash and you just keep driving and while you're driving, it heats the exhaust up and it burns that soot to ash. The thing is, that works great until there's a problem. So in this case, we had two issues with this truck. So the first was it set glow plug codes. These Duramaxes do use the glow plugs to manage some of the emissions control systems. So they use the glow plugs not just as a starting aid, but also for some emissions management on cold starts. So because there were glow plug codes, this truck will not do a passive regen on its own. Now, that's why the truck came in, because it's got a, it's, it's derated, it's got no power, it's got an engine reduced power message on the dash, all of that. So the glow plugs prevented it from going into a passive regen, so we fixed the glow plugs and then tried to push it through a, a service regen, which is where I can use a scan tool, whoop, like this one here, and, and force the truck to do a regen sitting in a parking spot like I am right now. This process, again, it's the same thing. We're gonna heat the exhaust up really hot. The way that this Duramax heats the exhaust up super hot is it takes the exhaust, it, it adds extra fuel while it's running. So it brings the engine RPM up to like 2250 RPM, give or take, and then it adds, it's spraying extra fuel. So it'll inject some fuel 
it can it can inject fuel in the exhaust stroke it can inject more fuel like there's a couple different things that it does to the injection to try to bring that exhaust gas temperature up but the thing is you're coming out of the turbo at about 500 550 degrees and then there is a fuel injector in the downpipe so there is what's called the ninth injector or the exhaust after treatment fuel injector that is actually in the downpipe or rather the nozzle it's spraying into the downpipe the actual injector is up on the passenger side valve cover but that injector sprays raw diesel fuel at about 30 psi into the exhaust system now what that does is that fuel combusts because it's so hot it spontaneously combusts right spontaneous combustion is not the right word it it burns because there's so much heat there that it just it flashes and when it flashes it brings exhaust gas temperature up to 11, 12, 1300 degrees. So when the exhaust after treatment fuel injector is on and you're in a regeneration, you should see exhaust gas temperature sensor one at about 500 degrees, and then you should see exhaust gas temperature sensor two at like 1100 degrees. So there's a huge jump in temperature between sensor one and sensor two, and then all the way down the line if that injector is working. So in the case that we have with this truck here, we put the glow plugs in it, now it's able to do a passive regen. It won't do a passive regen because it's setting a code for soot accumulation in the DPF. Now, so I'm going to do a, a, a regen here, stationary regen, service regen, manual regen, whatever you want to call it. And we are not getting exhaust gas temperature sensor two over 570 degrees and the injector is being commanded on. There is fuel pressure to the injector. There is no temperature increase at all in the between sensor one and sensor two. And because of that, we can then know and prove that the fuel injector is not injecting that fuel into the exhaust system. Because that fuel is not being injected, we're not getting the temperature increase. Because we're not getting the temperature increase, the truck's never gonna complete a regen no matter how many times you try to run it. And it sits here and it's not flagging code for this. Like it is not setting a code. It just sat here trying to do the regen for 20 minutes. But that's where having knowledge and understanding how the system works is super important to diagnosing trucks, especially these after treatment issues. They can be challenging for some technicians. So the super common problem with this ninth injector going bad, like super common, but the way you can tell is if the system is on, if there's fuel pressure to the injector, and if there's no temperature increase between sensor one and sensor two during a regen, the injector is bad. Um, you buy these injectors directly from the OE, it's gonna come with a fuel injector and then it's a section of stainless steel line that goes down into the nozzle. It's actually in the exhaust. They're not super hard to change. There is a special tool that's required to disconnect the quick connect on the inlet of the injector. You can pick it up on Amazon for less than 20 bucks. I'll put a link down in the description if I can remember to do that. But effectively, DPF catches the soot, regen burns the soot to ash. If you can't get the temperature of the exhaust up high enough, you'll never complete a regen. And in this case, that's what's causing the problem, causing this truck to go into limp mode and be a recurring issue for this customer. So hopefully you found this video helpful. If you have questions about how a DPF works or you wanna see other videos like this, um, leave it in a comment below and I will do my best to answer those. But DPFs are hard for a lot of people because they don't understand them, but once you understand them, they're not that complicated of a system to understand. Once you understand how it works, then we can diagnose and repair it. So remember guys, test, don't guess, and we'll see you guys in the next video.